Hi, and welcome to Vintage Doll Collector. A couple of years ago, I bought a huge collection of dolls, including many 50s and 60s glamour dolls. By glamour dolls, I mean the high-heeled lady dolls, like the Revlon dolls and their many copycats. But there were also a lot of more modern dolls in there, both fashion dolls and play dolls. I took the pictures back then, but have just finally finished putting them together into a video. There are so many of them, I'm splitting this one into two parts. So if you're watching part two, see the link in the description box for part one. Okay, let's jump right in. I'm going to start off with some of the newer dolls. This is Madison from the Springfield collection, made by Fibercraft. She is quite clearly a knockoff of the American Girl doll. Even the design of the packaging is similar to what the historical American Girls came with. But with a price of $9.99, she was much more affordable. The original Springfield collection dolls were kits that came out in the mid-1990s. It was basically all put together, but you had to stuff the cloth torso with fiber fill. A short time later, they started selling this already stuffed version, and the black doll, who in the kit version was called Maggie, became Madison. Later on, the Springfield dolls got jointed limbs, but this is the first version of Madison. The back of the package shows the other dolls in the line. This is another 90s doll, Young Lady So Beautiful, made by Playmates. I remember when these dolls came out because I was collecting jean dolls at that time and these were about the same size. She has acrylic inset eyes and long lashes. Jean was marketed for adult collectors, but this doll was aimed at the kids market. She wasn't successful, though. I think this fantasy ball series was the only one they made. The back of the box shows the different hair and skin colors that were available. This is also a young lady so beautiful. She's only got her necklace and undies left. She has a hard plastic torso with vinyl head and limbs. This one has dark blonde hair with lighter blue eyes than the one in the box. The hair is a wig, so if anyone doesn't feel like trying to restyle those curls, it could be replaced easily enough. These dolls are completely unmarked. Here's another American Girl type doll. This is Riding Savannah from the Our Generation line made by Batat. She's quite heavy, much heavier than Madison. Her outfit is very cool, denim jacket and jeans with gold lamé trim accented with black flocked polka dots. She has a matching headband. She's clearly marked on the back of her head and dated 1998. Check out her awesome red cowgirl boots. She has her original wrist tag too. Another Batat doll in the collection. This one is Jack and he must be Savannah's brother because they have the same face. His t-shirt's a bit grubby. I washed it before I sold him. Remember the awesome boots that Savannah had? Well, check out Jack's even more awesome hiking boots. I love that they actually lace. He's got the same 1998 date as his sister. He wasn't part of the Our Generation line, though. He was sold under the Collector's Lane brand. This is a Madame Alexander doll, Babette, made from the Sasset mold. Her little black dress has a tiered pleated skirt, silver glitter dots on the bodice, and silver rhinestone trim around the neckline. A pink rose accents the waistline. She has a very simple hairstyle, just a black satin ribbon ponytail. Babette was one of the Portrait series made from 1988 to 89. Here's another Fibercraft doll. She would have been sold in craft stores to dress at home. This is Hollywood Starlet. She's a little bit taller and a little bit slimmer than Young Lady So Beautiful. I wish her hair wasn't in her face. For a cheap doll, she's really pretty with brown eyes and long brown curly hair. There was a blonde version made as well. I have seen one of these dolls that came with a crochet pattern to make her an outfit and another one to dress her like an angel. Some of the Hollywood Starlet dolls didn't have shoes. You had to buy them separately. 
Fortunately, she has hers. I took this photo so you could see the size comparison with Hollywood starlet, young lady so beautiful, and shiny who's the same size as Bobby. This is Kitty Collier by Robert Tonner. She's the femme fatale doll. The original owner evidently took the outfit off and put her right back in the box. The hairnet is still on her hair. She's dated 2002. She's about the same size as Hollywood Starlet, but much better quality with inset eyes. She has a stand with her name on it. This is another Robert Tonner doll. This is one of the cripple bush kids called Playing Croquet. She's a sweet little doll, just eight inches tall. She comes with a croquet mallet and ball. Here's the label on the end of the box. Okay, now let's start looking at some of the older dolls. Here's a sweet little hard plastic doll marked Made in USA on her back. She's 13 inches tall and dressed in a mommy-made wedding gown. Here's a better look at her. Here's the top of her veil. Now here's the first of many glamour dolls or Revlon type dolls you'll see in these videos. It's too bad she's had a haircut because she has a pretty face and platinum blonde hair. There are no marks on her. Her body is good quality too with a twisting waist. I don't know if this is her original dress or not. It's factory made of flocked nylon with a taffeta underskirt and bodice lining. This little toddler girl is 17 inches tall. She has a blow molded body, so it's probably from the 1960s. She's marked U1728 on the back of her head. She has been redressed in this elaborate outfit. I'm not an expert on national costumes, but she looks like some Hungarian dolls I've had in the past. She has sequined boots to match her vest. She wears a crown of ribbons and flowers. Somebody put a lot of work into this. Now here's a real Revlon doll made by Ideal in the late 1950s. She's the 18 inch size. She's not in bad shape. Her hair needs some restyling, but it's not terrible. She has no earring holes, and I'm trying to figure out if that means she was originally dressed in a certain outfit or what. The book I have just says ears were usually pierced. Her dress is not original, but it's pretty cute, and it matches her eyes perfectly. I have a 22-inch and a 20-inch Revlon in my curio cabinet, but I don't have an 18-inch doll, so I think I'll keep her for now. Most of you will probably recognize this doll. She's Beautiful Chrissy by Ideal from the early 1970s. She's wearing a mommy-made dress that is appropriate for the time period. Her hair needs restyling. I can't tell if it's been cut or not. Let's see if her growing hair feature still works. It does. Somebody gave her fingernail and toenail polish. Here's another grow hair doll. This is Chrissy's cousin, Velvet. I love her violet eyes. She's wearing her original dress. Her grow hair feature still works too. These dolls were very popular at the time, so they're not rare by any means, but they're still great dolls. This is another unmarked Revlon type glamour doll from the 50s. Dressed as a bride, but this is a factory made dress, so probably her original outfit. The tool has some tears in it. Here's her bouquet. She's a nice doll. This hard plastic girl doll appears to have had her wig replaced at some point, so this isn't her original hair, but I love the color. She might be an r &B doll. Hard to see if there's any mark on her because there's so much dried glue on her head from the wig. This is a factory-made dress, which may or may not be original. These two dolls are from EG's Hearts and Flowers series. They're 15 inches tall and marked with the EG name and dated 1963 on the back of their heads. They all came in these big poofy lace or velvet gowns. The dresses kind of overwhelm the dolls. 
The dress is tagged assembled in Haiti of U.S. components. You can see that they each came with an unusual stand. Some of these dolls were sold with special stands that sat on music boxes. Unfortunately, on these two, the feet broke right through the stand, so they're pretty much useless now, and I don't have the music boxes anyway. I see the 50 cent mark. I think this collector bought a lot of her dolls at yard sales. Now this doll is made from the same mold with the same markings as the Hearts and Flowers dolls. But the other two dolls I just showed you have the brush type eyelashes and this one has hard plastic molded eyelashes and her eyes are a bit different. Her identity is a mystery at this point. I like that she's sort of looking off into the distance. Her outfit is very 1960s. I haven't found any mint in box dolls like her wearing modern clothing, so I don't know if this is her original dress or not. It does have the same kind of snaps as the Hots and Flowers ladies. I have seen one in a bride dress, but she had long straight hair. Here's a comparison of the two dolls. You can see their eyeballs are actually different sizes. I noticed when I was taking the pictures that she has a pink stain on her wrist. I also noticed that the brunette Hearts and Flowers doll has a broken torso, so instead of trying to get the stain off, I just swapped arms. Here's another Revlon type doll, 18 inches tall. She's marked with the number 12 on the back of her head. She has pearl drop earrings. I don't know about the skirt, but I'm pretty sure that plaid shirt is not original. Her face looks very much like a Revlon. These two nine and a half inch dolls are Forever Best Friends from 2004, made by the same company that made the Bratz dolls, but to me these are way cuter. They're dressed in their pajama party outfits. Their eyes are decals. If I had a grandchild, these are the kind of dolls I would buy them. They don't have jointed knees or waists, but they do have jointed wrists. They're marked with the year and MGA Entertainment Inc. on the back of their heads. These action figures were made by ES Toys. I couldn't find out too much about them. I think they're relatively recent. They're not quite tall enough to be boyfriends for Barbie-sized dolls. What I like about them is they all have different face molds. Some of them have kind of stern expressions, though. The black doll is my favorite. He has a nice face. They have a lot of joints and a lot of muscles. This collection was so massive, I had to make three trips to get it all home in my little car. The first day, I took home three big tubs, and I went through everything and was disappointed that there was no candy fashion doll in any of them, since there were so many other glamour dolls. But the second day's haul had one, two, three, four candy fashions. She was made by Deluxe Redding and sold in grocery stores. She originally came in a massive box with all of these outfits. I was lucky to get most of the clothing pieces in with this lot. And this doll has her earrings, but it was missing all the other jewelry and accessories. And there was only one shoe in this lot out of the four pairs she originally came with. Since then, I bought another lot of candy fashion clothing and accessories, so I have a more complete set now. I'm going to do a separate video on candy fashion. With her jointed knees, Candy is one of the few dolls in my collection who can actually sit down properly. This nice table and chairs was part of the haul, too. I expect it was made for 18-inch play dolls like American Girls. It takes up way too much space, though, so I have sold it. The seats of the chairs are made with brown paper, folded in strips and woven together. This is a beautiful modern sissy doll. She's Taffeta Romance Sissy, dated 2002. The rose pink taffeta sheath gown has a big train. The design is embroidered on the fabric. 
She has a velvet collar and belt with a rhinestone buckle and a beaded choker necklace. Her blonde hair is in a curly updo with black fabric flowers. She has interesting pink and black shoes. Her eyes are gray and her lips are deep red. I prefer the vintage sissies from the 50s, but she is a beautiful doll. The price tag on the box is $249.99, and I think that was a discounted price. I think she was originally even higher. I don't collect the modern dolls, and she was too big to ship, so I donated her to my local library for their fundraising auction. Here's the 14-inch Betsy McCall doll by Tonner Doll Company. This is what they call the starter doll. She's a really nice size to collect and sew for and for a kid to play with. Let me get the hairnet off so you can see her face. These dolls have acrylic eyes and some of them have changed to strange colors. I've seen one with orange eyes and another one with pink eyes. But fortunately, this doll's eyes are still brown. She has a red ribbon in her brown hair. She wears a red and white striped t-shirt and a denim jumper with her name embroidered on it. White socks and white sneakers. Her tag is shaped like a paper doll dress. And here's the back side. She's dated 2000. This is Betsy's cousin, Linda McCall. She's 10 inches tall, with blue eyes and blonde hair with a blue ribbon. This doll is called Travel Time. She wears a smocked plaid dress with a white collar edged in black. Underneath is a white petticoat and tights and black flocked Mary Jane shoes. Her navy blue beret has a plaid bow to match the dress. And check out our little camera, so cute. Madame Alexander has made a lot of different dolls of the Little Women characters over the years. These two are from the Little Women Journal's Play Doll collection. They're 16 inches tall and dated 1999. I did a little research and found that the ones in the window boxes came with the hardcover book, while the ones in the regular boxes did not. I think the window box dolls were made to be sold in stores, while the regular boxes were probably for people purchasing online, and maybe you had to buy the book separately. That's just a guess, though, so if you know, please leave a comment. Joe is the one who came in the box without the window. She's a redhead with brown eyes and freckles. Like most Alexander dolls, their clothing is gorgeous and well-made. Joe wears a dark red calico dress with a gingham apron. Here are her shoes. The tag lists all the extra accessories and outfits you could get. Meg wears a purple gingham dress with velvet accents. Don't you love all the details? She has dark brown hair with a braid across the top and bright green eyes. Here's her book. She has the same underwear and shoes as Joe. Check out the detailed trim on her skirt. Here's her tag. The back of Meg's box has more information. It shows the Amy doll and all her extras. And here's Beth. The box is damaged, as you can see. I also didn't have room to keep these dolls, so I donated them for raffle items at doll club events last year. This is a glamour doll that I've never been too crazy about. I don't know if it's her high arched eyebrows or what. She's marked KCM Corp on the back of her neck. She's 20 inches tall and seems like she has similar proportions to Barbie, just bigger all over. They also made this doll in a 16-inch size and a 24-inch size. 
She came wearing this weird homemade vinyl vest and leopard print skirt. I bet she would be fun to dress in some great vintage style outfits, though. But I have too many projects already, and her hair is a mess, so she won't be at the top of my list. This Beautiful Lady is All About Eve by Susan Joaquin, dated 2000. Here's the end of the box. This one is called Premier Eve. Eve was produced for a few years, and you could get different hair colors and outfits, and a black version was made as well. Her theme is that she's the world's most glamorous photojournalist. She has a gorgeous face with painted eyes. She also has jointed knees, which is a really nice feature. I think I showed a brunette Eve in one of my other videos. Here's her clutch purse. Her shoes are very similar to the ones the original Jean dolls wore. She comes with an acrylic stand. Well, that's all for part one of this haul. Which doll was your favorite? Let me know in the comments. When the part two video is ready, I'll add the link in the description box. Click the subscribe button and the little bell icon if you want to be notified when I post new videos. Thanks for joining me and see you soon.